In this video, we are discussing uh, the example questions related to the relationship between the Gibbs free energy equilibrium constant and the reaction quotient. So this is question number 7.10. The value of delta G minus for the phosphorylation of glucose in glycolysis is 13.8 kilojoules per mole. Find out the value of Kc at 298 Kelvin. So we've been given the value of delta G minus which is equal to 13.8 kilojoules per mole. We've been given the temperature 298 Kelvin. Okay, and we also know from the previous uh, video that delta G minus equals to minus RT ln Kc. So, instead of using ln, we are going to convert it to a logarithm. So, that will give us delta G minus equals to minus 2.303 RT log Kc. Because I felt like it's easier to get the anti-log instead of having to uh, convert it to the Euler's number and then get it there, get it from there, the exponent and get it from there. So we are using the logarithm instead. So we know that log, so basically I'm going to rearrange this equation. So log Kc will be equal to minus delta G minus divided by 2.303 R Okay, now R is the gas constant and R equals to 8.314 joules per mole per Kelvin. Okay, so obviously we can't have it in kilojoules and this one in joules. So we're going to have to convert delta G minus and this is becomes equal to 13.8 into 10 to the power 3 because kilo to joules. So 10 to the power 3 joules per mole so let's simplify this or like let's substitute and simplify uh, so delta G so minus 13.8 into 10 to the power 3 joules per mole divided by 2.303 into 8.314 joules per mole per Kelvin into 298 Kelvin. So let's cancel all the units mole, inverse mole, joule, and joule. All of these, when they're cancelled and when the equation is simplified, we will get the answer of log Kc equals to minus. Oh, sorry, minus 2.3. 418. So log Kc equals to minus 2.418. When we take the anti log and when we simplify, the value of Kc becomes equal to 3.82 into 10 to the power minus. And I'm assuming you know how to take the log and anti-log because it's actually pretty important and highly useful and you have to solve problems like these. Let's go to the next question. Question 7.11. <clears throat> Hydrolysis of sugar, uh, sucrose, gives us sucrose plus H2O plus, plus H2O gives rise to glucose plus fructose. So the equilibrium constant for the reaction is 2 into 10 to the power. <coughs> 13 at 300 Kelvin. So we need to calculate delta G minus at 300 Kelvin. So let's rewrite the same equation. So delta G minus equals to minus 2.303 RT log <coughs> Kc. Right. So we need to find delta G minus basically going to be a substitution. We have the value of R that is equal to 8.314 joules per mole per Kelvin. <clears throat> and yes, I have a cold. T is the temperature that is 300 Kelvin because that's what's been asked. And <clears throat> the equilibrium constant coefficient constant that is Kc 
equals to uh, 2 into 10 to the power 13. So we have all of these. We just have to substitute all of these values into the equation. So delta G minus will be equal to minus 2.303 into R, which is 8.314. Uh, let's do one thing. Let's put the units in brackets so that it's easier to identify uh, per Kelvin uh, into 300 Kelvin. into uh, log 2 into 10 to the power 13. So basically you'll be <clears throat> the Kelvin and Kelvin will get cancelled out and which is this is exactly what we want joules per mole. So we'll be left with that in terms of the units and when we simplify <clears throat> when we simplify the above equation uh, we get the value as minus 7.64 into 10 to the power 4 joules per mole. So basically you'll have to multiply everything and then take the log of this which I assume you know at this point how to do um, and this is also equal to minus 7.64 into 10 or 76.4 kilojoules per mole. Uh, so basically both these questions were pretty straightforward. We just had to substitute uh, the values that we were given. We need to know the gas constant. Pretty sure at this point you know what the gas constant is uh, and you will have to have an idea as to how to calculate the logarithm and the anti-log of various values. With that, we're done with the example problems 7.10 and 7.11. In the next video, we will be discussing the introduction to the various factors that affect equilibrium.